mentioned six times and the word servant 900 times in the Bible. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you something right now. Can everybody hear me good? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Right now, if being a servant is below you, then being a leader is above you. Right. Okay? If you cannot be a servant, then you cannot be a leader. Because servants, we are called first to be servants of God. Right. Soul winners, children of God, before mm -hmm. we're ever called into any type of ministry. That's right. Okay? And not every ministry means pulpit. Definitely. As we'll learn more about next month when we do the fivefold ministry. The Bible tells us in Matthew 22 and 14, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, that scripture hit me today while I was on my way to pick Ezra Lynn up from school. And I said, God, it don't make sense because if you've called me, then my automatically automatic assumption is that you have chosen me. So why does the scripture say, for many are called if you are chosen? As I was pondering this, it came to me that if you are called of God, then that makes you chosen. But you have a free will. And sometimes when God calls people, they step back and they ignore the calling. Or they don't want to follow the calling. Or they want to do it their way. Therefore, they are no longer chosen. It's those who are willing to be submissive to pastoral authority, be submissive to the Word of God, and be submissive to the teaching of the Word of God that God can take to that next level of not only being called, but chosen. But when we rebel against authority, and we have that I'm not going to be led leadership or that I'm not going to be led mentality, then God cannot use us. So you may have had a calling, but he takes the choice, the choosing, his choosing away. Mm -hmm. In other words, that mantle is going to go somewhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And as I've already said, not every calling is a pulpit calling. Some people think when they're called into the ministry, that they're automatically called, I'm sorry, I've got to cut my ringer off. That's a pretty loud one. Some people think automatically, oh, I've got a calling of God on my life. I need to get up here and preach. No. When Brother used Pam, which he was called into the ministry before we met, when he went to his pastor and he told his pastor, I've got a call to preach of my life. This guy said, good, go shine my shoes. Mm -hmm. That was it. He didn't ask you to preach. He didn't ask you to teach Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Told him to go shine his shoes. The next thing he knew, he was cleaning out the baptistries. And then he was cleaning the church. He was washing the pastor's car. When we did start dating, which by the time we started dating, he was preaching. But even when we were dating, there were times that he had to call me and cancel our date because his pastor told him to. Well, there's nobody going to tell me to cancel my day. Well, then you're not willing to be yeah, That's right. That's that right. right. You know? Mm -hmm. And I know the first time he done that, and he told me that Brother Hodge said he couldn't come. I said, well, what, what does Brother Hodge have to do with it? <laughs> and, you know, that was my first response. What does Brother Hodge have to do with it? And my husband said, because he's my pastor. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if I cannot submit to my pastor, mm -hmm. I am not submitting to God because God put that pastor here. Right. 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 And he's here for a purpose. And if we can't submit to him, then we're walking in disobedience to the word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Now, we, we know that if the pastor goes off on the deep end and he starts doing Lula Bell stuff and all that <laughs> stuff, then we kind of say, and there's a proper chain of authority to handle that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Even David, when King Saul was messing up, David rebuked King Saul's guards because David snuck into the camp, cut a corner of his clothing off, and went back and rebuked them for not guarding the king who had already been abandoned by God. And 
David had the wisdom to know God put him there, God will remove him when the time's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we need to make sure that we are under submission. If you're only looking for a pulpit ministry, mm -hmm. then who are you seeking to please? Mm -hmm. God or man? Right. Right. There's a difference between a pastor and a hireling. Mm -hmm. A pastor has the heart of his congregation. Mm -hmm. A pastor wants the congregation. There's a difference between fivefold ministry and hirelings. Hirelings just saying, gimme, 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 gimme. Mm -hmm. The fivefold ministry is saying, let me give you. Yeah. That's the difference between a servant mm -hmm. and somebody that just wants it the limelight. And before we're done with this course, you're going to have to answer yourself, am I a servant of God? Or am I just wanting to find something else to do? Now, the very essence of leadership is that you have to have vision. You can't blow an uncertain trumpet. You've got to know what you want, and you've got to catch the vision of your pastor. You can't have a vision of tent meetings, and you have a vision of this church, and you have a vision of this ministry, and you have a vision of that, and you have a vision of this, and it's all contrary to the mm. pastor's vision. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Right. Because then you have division, right. not vision. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And God is not the author of confusion. The church body has to catch the vision of the pastor in order to work in one accord to work with the pastor. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. I have watched as denominal churches over the years have gone from here. And surprisingly, there is a lot of denominal churches that used to believe and teach like we teach. Mm -hmm. And they've dropped their stand. They've dropped their teaching. Mm -hmm because of division and no vision within their church. The Methodist organization this week is having a big debate, or last week actually is having a big debate, and it's going to split their organization again. They split a few years ago when they brought in the gay and lesbian movement within their churches and ordained their first lesbian pastor. Mm -hmm. Now this past conference, their debate was on the fact that abortion is correct. Now, to me, you can't even call yourself a child of God if you believe in some of the things that they're teaching and right, preaching. Those right. two subjects, Scripture, one's an abomination to God, and that is murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, and the Methodist Church, back when John Wesley and them helped found the Methodist Church, one of the things that John Wesley's mother prayed for over her boys was that they would never walk away from the truth of the Word of God. John Wesley started the Wesleyan movement in Brunswick, Georgia, St. Simon's Island, where I grew up at, and there's a lot of memorials and everything to him. They said he prayed so much and so hard that there were times that he lost himself in the spirit and didn't know where he was or what was going on. And John Wesley's mother recorded in her writings that she had walked in many a times and found her son caught up in the spirit speaking to God. When there is a vision, there is unity. Mm -hmm. And we need to catch the vision. And as leaders, you need to have the vision of the pastor because leaders teach to others. And you're teaching to the others as they come into the congregation about the truth of the Word of God. And you cannot be contrary to the yeah, pastor. That's right. And there's some things that you don't need to mess with as the pastor's role. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, I've seen people commit spiritual abortion mm. by stepping into the role of the pastor and killing the children before they're ever birth. Yep. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we catch the spirit and the vision of the pastor and the congregation works together as one unit. And those that are stepping into roles of leadership, stepping into roles of multi-ministry, you've got to have this vision. You can't expect people that you're teaching to follow if you're not willing to follow. That's right. You can't expect people to submit if you're not willing to submit. Yes, ma'am. 
Should we hold questions afterwards? Yes, please jot it down on your paper and ask me after. Leadership is the act of influencing others. That's simple definition of what leadership is. We are influencing others to come to God. We are influence others to start serving God. And I'm going to tell you something, church congregation that's here tonight. If you're not willing to step into the roles that the church needs to be filled, then how can you sit back and complain because we don't have enough Sunday school mm -hmm. teachers or we don't have enough praise group singers or we don't have enough doing this or we don't have enough doing that? Well, then step into the role. That's right. Send to use a PM 101 is a tough course. <laughs> okay, you step into the role. I've had people come to me. I'm going to go find another church. Why? Because you don't have enough activities for the children here. We need a youth leader. Well, then become a youth leader. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't tell me what we need if you're not willing to do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, if the toilets need cleaning, I'll go in there and clean the toilets. Yeah. Yeah. If there's paper on the floor, I'll pick paper up. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, as leaders, we have to be willing to step into any needed position at the time, not just the glory position. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. right. And I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Pastorialship is not always glory. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's not. The Great Commission tells us to go, preach, teach the gospel so that others can be saved. Never told us to warm a cube. Right. Never told us to be fashion models. Right. And nobody likes to shaking up more than I do, but that's not my job. Right. My number one job is to win souls. Yes. yes. And I'm going to tell you, it does not bother me to get out on the street corner and hug the prostitute. Right. It right. does not bother me to reach down and help the beggar. And if you can't do it, you can't be a leader. That's right. right. I was at a pastor where I learned one of the hardest lessons I ever learned. And from that day forward, I refused, I didn't care where I was at, I refused to listen to stuff that was contrary to the Bible. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I've, I've always been taught from knee high to a grasshopper, you respect the pastor mm -hmm. in the town that you're in and That's right. behave yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Right. That's and I believe that 100%. But while preaching a revival at this minister's church, I was coming down the steps after church that night. They had a big beautiful, it's up north in Yankee country, big beautiful church that had probably about 20 stairs going up to the front door. And as I was coming down, there was a young woman probably in her early 20s came staggering across the road. And there was a light pole right at the corner there. And she staggered up against that light pole and bent over and started regurgitating. I started down the steps. I was going to go help her. Okay, when I did, the pastor's wife caught the back of my shirt. And she pulled me back. And I said, what? She said, leave her alone. And before I could say anything, she looked at that young lady and she said, go on and get yourself out of here. Oh, I don't want you throwing up on our churchyard. Go on. Get oh. out. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked. I mean, it just, it, wow. it blew my mind because mm -hmm. you don't do that. You help people. That's right. That's right. You help people. And I, I, in a state, my husband said, I can't believe you actually just stood there and didn't say that, but I said, it shocked me so bad, right. I honestly didn't know what to say at the moment, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we've got to be willing to reach out to every walk of life. I had somebody tell me earlier today, and it just broke my heart, they made the statement, they said, you stand there, talking about church world. And you talk about loving everybody. But the minute a homosexual walks in your church, yes. you're like, back, back, back. No. Mm -hmm. The minute somebody who's committed a dreadful crime of murder and they walk in your pew, you're going, you should be dead. You shouldn't even be here in church. Right. No, honey. This is where right. they need to be. Right. Right. Amen. And if we can't love them, then we will go to hell with yes. them. That's right. Ooh. Amen. It broke my heart when this woman told me this because these are people that need us to reach out to them. And if we're going to be leaders in the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter if you ever have a preacher in front of your name. It doesn't matter what title you carry. It doesn't matter if you're ever recognized in this world. 
What matters is that we have the heart of God, that we see this world right. through Christ's yeah. eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was free. It's not in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to win souls. Amen. Right. That's what we're called to do. We have got to win souls. You need to be praying. Number one, to be an effective leader, you've got to have a prayer life. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. You've got to have a personal Bible study life. Mm -hmm. You need to be reading your Bible. Now, that 90-day yeah. challenge that I gave out at the mm -hmm. first of the year, that was just what it says. It's a challenge to be in leadership, to be a child of God. You need to read your Bible. So we do a bread program every year. We have a whole year to read your Bible. Okay? How can you teach what you don't know? Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, let me ask you something. How many people showed up at the manger? Right. How many? At the manger. At the manger where Jesus was born. How many people showed up? There was three of them. Then he's gone. I don't remember the number of shepherds. Okay. Y'all all need to go home and read your new Bible. <laughs> Me too. The shepherds showed up. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mary and Joseph, of course, was there. The wise men didn't show up for almost two later. years later. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's right. How many animals? Details. How many Details. of every kind of animal entered into the ark? Now, these are these are Sunday school questions. Mm -hmm. Two. Um, two. Two of each. Two, two of each kind. Male of the and female. Of the clean. I think so. Go home and read your Bible again. Of the clean. Of the clean. Yeah. Seven. Mm -hmm. Oh. Of every kind, yep. male and female, entered into the ark. Two okay. of every kind, male and female, entered into the ark. He could have left cockroaches off. <laughs> <laughs> and rats. And spiders. And, 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 and mosquitoes. Do you get right? on the point with just these little Sunday school? Right. We forget. Yeah, we do. We hear tradition because the nativity scene is tradition. I can't share everybody with that one. Okay, because it's tradition. We see the manger scenes. We see the shepherds. We see the wise men, and it automatically is in our mind. Let's hold our comments. Okay, it's automatically in our mind, but. Tradition. The Bible tells us not to be fooled by traditions and vain philosophies of this world. Because tradition holds many people in bondage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, many people will not live. I was born Baptist, raised Baptist, and I'll die Baptist. Yep. I was born Catholic, raised Catholic, and I'll die Catholic. Catholic teaches we have a mediator between um, ourselves and God. And it is the Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. I saw what the Bible said. Well, you know. <laughs> they got their own Bible. <laughs> they had their own Bible, but it's stuck in between our Bible. Mm -hmm. yep. There's only five books difference between their Bible mm -hmm. and ours, and it's stuck right between the New Testament and the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but what's our fault? What's what's the problem? What's the point? The point is we need to study. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved, mm -hmm. approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed." Am I perfect? No, but this is what I do, and this is what you need to do when you start teaching these Bible studies. If somebody asks you a question that you do not know, then write the question out. Don't try to make it up. That's right. right. Because if you tell them wrong, you're going to have to eat pigeon pie. Right. 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 Okay, do not tell them wrong. You go to them, you say, you know what? I don't know the answer to that right now. But I will write it down and I will get back with you at the next Bible study or I'll call you within 20 and call them. Yes, right. You're only as good as your word. That's right. I'll mm -hmm. call you at the next Bible study or I'll call you in 24 hours and I will give you an answer. Let me okay. research that or call my pastor or call Sister Yuzapan and find out the answer to that. And believe me, you're going to get some dilly whoppers. I had a woman ask me one time, did Adam, Adam and Eve have belly buttons? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, does it really matter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I've been asked some dinner workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you're going to get asked. 
Yeah. You're going to get asked, so be prepared for any of them. All right. Now, in this busy world, it is hard to get people to commit to the old-fashioned 10 to 12-week Bible studies. Yes, it is. Yeah. So what I always do, is I, and I try to have them with me all the time, as I teach the one hour Bible studies. Now I prefer, we, here at the church I'll have a place prepared for you. That's what I'm going to go over with y'all tonight. Personally, I prefer Into His Marvelous Light. It is a two hour Bible study, but it goes into more detail than this one does. Okay? But this one is good. Especially if it's all you got. You take it and you go with it. Run with it. Because it goes into enough detail that you can bounce off of it, which I'm going to show you how to do, and go into exploring God's Word, which is my favorite, or search for truth, which is pastor's favorite. Okay? Exploring God's Word is more colorful. Search for truth is more detailed. Mm -hmm. But they are both excellent Bible studies. They have, two, they have the second, second. I got the second uh, search for truth. Yeah, they, they the update first. them every so often. Yeah, so I have the second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. What I usually do whenever I'm teaching Bible study or I'm trying to get somebody to commit to a Bible study is I may walk up to them and we've been sitting there talking and I go, you know what, Linda, let me ask you something. I know you love God. Just in our course of call, never take away their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Right. Their relationship may not be complete. That's right. Their relationship may be going on the wrong mm -hmm. track, but you never take away the relationship with God. Why? Because the minute you tell them, you know you lost them going to hell. You yeah. just shut that door. You don't right. shut it. Okay? So you never take away that relationship because one thing, the Bible tells us in order to have friends, we've got to be sure ourselves friendly. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. Well, you've got to win Linda before you can win Linda to God. Right. And if I come over here with my axe yeah. and my 238s, right. mm -hmm. she's going to say, get thee away from me, Satan. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay? Yep. So, Linda, you know, I have watched you. We've talked. We've ate lunch together several times. I love the fact you're a praying woman. I like that. If God had something more for you, would you be interested? Yes. I mean, we never get enough of God, do we? Yeah. Never get enough of God studying, do we? Well, I've got this wonderful, I mean, it's only an hour long Bible study. It's called A Place Prepared for You. Can we take our next lunch break and do this together? Yeah. Now, what have I just done? I did not tell her, you're wrong, I'm going to teach you. Right. Well, let's explore it together. That's right. We're going to do it together. Mm -hmm. We can never learn enough about God. Yeah. Right. The United States has been so overcharged with quacks <laughs> that... Nobody's interested. And so you've got to get through all their theories. I won't say they're not interested. They're um, yeah. hesitant. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you've got to get through their theories before you can get to them. Mm -hmm. So win them mm -hmm. and then get to them. Mm -hmm. All right. So then you're going to, uh, when you go to the Bible study, you know, it's now lunch, okay? Take with you a pen. Take with you your copy and a copy for the person that you're teaching, and take with you some notebook paper. Why do I need notebook paper? Because she's going to ask questions. I promise you. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to stop your Bible study every five minutes to answer questions about belly buttons. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> okay, because the, you get off the subject. And, any, and I'm going to tell you something else, especially ladies are bad about doing. The first thing they want to know is why I don't have on pants or why I don't cut my hair. Mm -hmm. That is not important to this Bible study. Right. So what I usually say is, Linda, you know, I'm glad you asked that question. And I will be more than glad to explain to you scripturally why I do not wear pants and why I don't cut my hair. But before we do that, I would like for us to do this first because, you know, that's secondary to the plan of salvation. Yeah. The plan of salvation gets us into heaven. The guidelines of salvation helps direct us there. It's our compass to heaven. So let's talk about the compass 
after we talk about the destination. Okay, and then I write it down on my paper so she sees that I am concerned and that I will teach her or I will answer her questions. Now, going forward, I'll open up my Bible study and I'll say, let's read this together, Sister Linda. There was a man named Jesus Christ who was God manifested in the flesh. He so impacted, and there's nothing wrong with showing excitement when you're teaching a Bible study. Because if you go, he so impacted the world. That the calendar dating said, you know more excited about that than I am finding a spider. <laughs> okay? But get excited. I, my husband just gave me $50. Let's get excited here. <laughs> I wish. He so impacted the world that the calendar dating system changed from B.C., before Christ, to A.D. in the year of our Lord to pivot around the life of Christ. And there's nothing wrong with putting this in your own words, too, as long as your words are correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only did he do the miraculous while walking on earth, I mean, we know he turned water into wine, he walked on the ocean, he raised the dead. I mean, he did so many things while he was here on earth. Right. He allowed himself to be crucified for you. Isn't that awesome that somebody loved us so much that he gave his all? Now, see, I'm not exactly sticking to the script, but I'm sticking to the concept. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, He loved his creation that much. The exciting news is that when he rose from the dead, his word tells us in Acts 1 and 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Let me stop right there. Make sure the Bible that you take to a Bible study is a King James Version. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, some versions I we just don't mess with. No. Right. Okay, there's a difference between a version and a translation. Mm -hmm. A version is supposed to be translated word for word from the right. original manuscript. A translation is your words right. or my words interpreting it. Mm -hmm. So make sure it's a King James version because that's what most people own. Second Timothy 3.16 tells us, Linda, that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, that God, God was manifested in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Now, Linda, who was that that did all that for us? Jesus. Right there, you just knocked Trinity out of the water without ever displaying <laughs> Trinity right, yeah. one time. Mm -hmm. One scripture. And some, a lot of times when you're talking to a Trinitarian, they'll stop and they'll look at you and go, Jesus. Right. Hmm. And I'm going, yeah, isn't it awesome that God is in John 1? Here's where you can throw it, but you got to know, you got to study. Yeah. 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 Here's where John 1 and 1 comes into play, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we became a beheld his glory and his glory of the only begotten of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ. Ta-da! You just talked about the Bible study. Yes, it is that simple. Uh, um, yes, it is that simple. Wonder, Trinity. Yes, it is, honey. I come from a whole family of Trinities. It is that simple. But the thing is, is we've got to make sure we know and that we stand our ground. That's right. Lovingly right. stand our ground. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn how to combat that. Jesus made a special promise to all who followed him in this life. He said in John 14 and 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may be also. This study shows you how you can be ready. Now, Let's answer these questions, Sister Linda. Make sure we understood what we just studied. The world was so impacted by Jesus Christ that the yearly calendar was changed to B.C. and A.D. Was, did we read that up there? Yes. yes. Okay, so that's true. Jesus himself showed himself alive after he was crucified by many infallible proofs, being seen 40 days. Did we read that in the Bible? Jesus said to those who followed him, I go to prepare a place for you. Did we read that in scripture a minute ago? Okay. You just got her to admit everything that we read together is scripture. Because let me tell you, when you're dealing with people about salvation, 
And sister, I hadn't forgot your question. So don't. Did you write it down for me? Mm -hmm. What 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 was your question, real fast? It, you were saying something about uh, some people step into the role of the pastor. Uh huh. Uh, I want to know how can someone step into to the role of the All right, hold that one for the end because that was <laughs> that's a good example of take your note, taking notes, so we stay on subject. And when you're teaching a Bible study, keep them on the scripture. Okay, keep them on what you're studying. Right. I've taught Bible studies where I had to pull them back every five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've taught Bible studies where I've showed them my list. We'll get to it at the end of the Bible study because if you don't, then you'll get all over the place right. and you'll lose the focus of what yeah. you're doing. You may never get another opportunity to right. talk to this person. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Now, I am going to leave it up to y'all. You see this Bible study. You see how simple that is to teach. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to teach you this whole Bible study or do you want me to skip to the last page and show you skip how to, to close the last it? Page. Skip to the last page. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody yes. else? Okay. It's a very simple Bible study, but you... You have to study yourself so that you know one thing. Go to page three. They're very simple. And this is one reason I like into this marvelous lot better. They're very simple here when they tell you about repentance. Repentance is very important. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you something. You can snot and boo-boo all you want to and not repent. That's right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because the word repentance means to stop doing about face. And not look back. Mm -hmm. Okay? And when a person is... A, there's a difference between being sorry, folks, and being sorry you got caught. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Big difference. Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. Okay? You know, think about your teenagers. There's times that you've called them doing stuff, and you know that they weren't the least bit sorry. They said right. they were sorry to help make the punishment lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're just sorry they got caught with their hands in the cookie right. jar. Yeah. But, Okay, and that's the way people are. People can come to church and feel the power of conviction mm -hmm. and knowing that living together with the man and a woman living together and having sex outside of marriage is wrong and they'll feel the conviction in the teaching of the Word of God and they'll come to the altar and they'll repent and then walk right back out that door and go back mm -hmm. home and do what they got no business doing. And I forgot we had a little one in here, so I'm trying to be a little discreet here. Okay? <laughs> so, there's a difference between being sorry and being sorry you got caught. Yes. All right? So, whenever I'm teaching on repentance, I tell them that. Which right here, it just says it's a decision for a made-up mind. Well, it's more to that. Yes, it it means the made-up mind that I'm going to turn around and not do this anymore. It's telling God that I'm sorry and I'm going to leave that sinful life. So, sometimes when you're teaching, especially if you're teaching from... This one, and you'll do this even when you go into the 10-week Bible study, you're going to go into more detail. And that's, Sister Liz, when you'll go into more detail on the Trinity, and you'll go into more detail on baptism. Because the 10-week Bible studies do pull more detail into everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only thing that I've really added to this one, because this one is built to be done in an hour. Okay, now... Another thing that I think is important is the very last page. Now, you've taught them everything, you've gone through everything, and you've come to the last page, and you need to ask them these questions. Do you see how important it is to be born again of water and spirit? And if that individual tells you yes, then you say, well, you know, we've talked about it, repentance, you understand that you have to be baptized in Jesus' name? We can get you baptized right now if you want to. Mm -hmm. I can have you baptized this afternoon if you want to. Don't put it off four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. They might not be here. That's right. Because mm -hmm. life is but a vapor's brother watch said. Mm -hmm. Monday morning I woke up to my phone ring and my mother was crying on the other end of the phone. My first thoughts was my dad's brother had passed away and it turned out to be my cousin. 45 years old, the mother of a 10, 11 year old child died in her sleep. Massive heart attack. Never even woke back up. Life is better. You, you don't know. That's right. So you do everything you can to get that person to come on. Get them to come to church. Get them in here. Let's get them baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When the we, when you bring them in here to be baptized, we'll go ask them, did you repent of your sins? Do you understand what repenting of your sins is? 
So I'm going to baptize you now in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of this. And they're going to hear it again very briefly. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make sure they understand it because if they don't understand it, yeah. they're just getting wet. Right. Okay? So you need to ask of that. Then what I do, I say, Sister Lynn, I am so glad that you have, we have done this together and that you see the importance of this because I would hate to stand before God and have God ask me why I never told you. When it's so important to our salvation, personalize that Bible study. It's not her salvation, it's mm -hmm. our salvation. Yeah, that's right. Okay? And when you personalize it, you're making a friend out of that individual. Because you're not going to win nobody unless you become friendly with them. Mm -hmm. Because people are tired of self righteous attitudes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Okay? So we've got to make friends out of these people. And once I've made a friend, then, you know what, Linda? I'd like to do some more studying. Would you like to learn some more? We can do it once a week during lunch or once a week in the afternoon when you get off work and I get off work. We can go get coffee. But I've got this fantastic Bible study that I've, I've taught it literally hundreds of times. And I always learn something new when I do it. It's called Exploring God's Words. It's going to remind you of things from when you were a little kid in Sunday school. Once again, I'm reminding her of her history with God. And you're going to learn from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. And you, we're seeing Revelation unfolded in front of us right mm -hmm. now. You want to do this with me? They're not always going to say yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. They're not. They're not. Mm -hmm. But my chances now are greater of mm -hmm. her saying yes than if I went to her and said, you want to do a 12 week Bible study? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've lost my mind. Right. Okay. Yeah, but they'll do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because number one, there's two reasons they're going to do it. Number one, you've proven yourself to them. Mm -hmm. And number two, they're scared of what you're going to think if they say no. no. <laughs> Reality. Mm -hmm. You know? So, this is how we teach to the people. And every one of you in here are very well versed. I do suggest that we all, myself included, get more into the Word of God because mm -hmm. yeah. they could trip you up very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're shaking your belief. <laughs> it's that they so twist the word of God that you sit there and wonder one of the favorite things that the Trinitarians or I'll, I'll back up here one of the favorite things that the once saved always saved people do is the thief on the cross oh, yeah. gave his life the day Jesus Christ died he didn't get the Holy Ghost he didn't get baptized in Jesus name but yet he was in paradise with God and what paradise is in heaven only the bride of Christ is going to heaven. Okay? That's number one. Number two, he was still in the dispensation of sacrifice. Which meant that all he had to do to get his sins not forgiven. This is something else that we learn. That you need to learn if you don't know it already. It's not to get your sins forgiven. Sacrifice only rolled your sins up to the next year. So you had to go and do it again at the next year. Yeah. Okay? So... The thief had his sins rolled away, and Christ told him because of his faith that day he'd be with him in paradise. But after the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. the church age began, and now you've got to repent, you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name, and you've got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's one reason I love exploring God's Word, because it goes into the different dispensations that the children of God have lived in. What was required in each dispensation? We got one more dispensation we're going to be going through. Anybody want to tell me what it is? <laughs> Don't all speak up at one time. <laughs> the day of Pentecost, the church age is going to end when the rapture of the church is taken out of here. And if you're going to make it to heaven after that or make it into the new kingdom, you have to lay your life down for Christ. That's right. It's going to be the dispensation of tribulation. When the church is no longer here. And for lack of better verbiage, all H-E double hockey sticks breaks out. Mm -hmm. Because the church is no longer here. Right now, we're a protection for this world. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the day is going to come that we're going to be removed out of here through the rapture of the church. And this protection for this world ends and tribulation begins. So, there's one more one more discussion. Now... Anybody say they don't need to study more? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I need to study yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every day, every hour. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me finish up, then I'm going to take questions.
questions. The one thing that you need to remember is to stick to the study when you're teaching. It's so easy to get sidetracked. So I take that paper and I write it down, just like you saw here today. Hold it till after, hold it till after, hold it till after, because it has specifically nothing to do necessarily with the Bible study part. After finishing, I follow up with it. You know, I check with it. Sister Linda, are we still on for Thursday? We're going to start at in God's Word. I'll send you a text. Thank God for technology. I'll send you a text. I'll send you an email. I'll give you a call. But I'm going to make sure you're still coming. Follow your, up with your studies and build a relationship with them. It's more than just giving them a Bible study. And don't stop when you complete that Bible study. If you know she's got a birthday next week, send her a birthday card. Mm -hmm. We have an Easter dinner that day. Invite her to the dinner. Invite her family to the dinner. It's about building relationships. Invite them to church. Invite them to dinner. Invite them to outings. The Bible tells us to compel them to come in. When the church of the book of Acts was formed, the Bible says they went from house to house, breaking bread and studying together. Okay? The Bible's not specific whether they were eating lunch or if they were breaking the bread. Point is there was a bonding that was being formed. How many people think that you can bond with a person? You know, this is how hate is There she goes, sidetracking. I'm sidetracking. <laughs> I'm the teacher. I can do it. <laughs> Remember, if it's going to be, it begins with pastor. No, me. Thank you. It begins with, with me. me. If it's going to be, it begins with me. The pastor's job is to teach y'all. Mm -hmm. It's your job to bring in the teacher. Okay? Because the pastor's job, our job is to you and equipped you to go into the highways and the byways and bring in the sh other sheep so that the pastor can start teaching them and then they start multiplying. Sheep beget sheep. That's right. And pastors is going to start begetting leaders. That's what this class is about, to beget leaders and to develop more leaders. Put your vision into practice, ladies and gentlemen. Next month, we're going to be talking about the five-fold ministry and Christian leadership. Okay. Now, questions. And since Sister Nathan was the first to ask, I'm going to let her ask her question first. Oh, I, you were saying that some people they step into the role of pastor mm -hmm. for the um, for the baby's born or something like or something like that. I just want to know how can someone step into the role of pastor? Okay, very good question. We have pastor churches. I also went on and talked about spiritual abortion at that point. Sister Linda, I'm using hers a lot of examples. <laughs> Sister Linda's just prayed through to the Holy Ghost. Okay? And she comes to church and she's got on a mm -hmm dress. <laughs> okay? Before I, as the pastor's <laughs> wife, Ladies minister can sit down and talk with her. She knows nothing about this. She knows no. nothing about modesty. No. Mm -hmm. And before I could talk to her, Sister Susie Q over here, and I've seen this happen so many times, mm -hmm. has run over here, that top's too low. That split's too high. And it may be. But it's not the saint's place That's at right. this time to tell her that. So they have stepped into the role of the pastor. Because what's the pastor's role? To teach. to teach the Word of God, which includes reproof, correction, instructions in righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we've killed her mm -hmm. in the birthing process. Right. Okay? So we need to be careful not to step into that role because there are things that is not our place to do. That's right. right. Okay? Now, if Sister Linda is not at church, and you call and say, Sister Linda, we missed you today. I want you to know we're praying for you. If you need a ride or if there's anything I could do for you, let me know. That is perfectly acceptable. Mm -hmm. If you're teaching her a Bible study 
And she says, why do I not need to wear my splits up to here? Then you say, because the Bible teaches us modesty. And the Bible teaches us that we are to cover the private parts of our body. And the Bible gave us joints to teach us what the private areas of our body was. And the Bible tells us that it's a shame for a man or a woman to show their thigh. And if your, your thigh starts here at your knees, so if you're showing that thigh, then we are out of context with Scripture. Okay, so then it's appropriate for us to teach. But just to walk up to somebody that's just prayed through to the Holy Ghost because they came to church looking like that and ripping them apart, we just killed them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I meant in that context of stepping into the role of the pastor. Did that answer that? Okay. Did you have another one? Okay. Sister? I have a few. Okay. Okay. One at a time, please. <laughs> yes. Um, the Bible study. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they think, uh, as a leader, they think um, just because you only have one person, they, just, they should just quit and not teach. I think that's just a little bit not quite right because one soul is okay. still one soul. I agree. But are you asking me a question or are you telling the group something? Oh, okay. No, it's just as far as, <laughs> as far as that's the question, as far as um, how can you just teach somebody that still one person is good to teach Bible study? Okay. Let me make sure I understand you. Sister Linda is the person you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is she the one that feels like this, it's not important because she's only one person or is it somebody outside of her that feels that way? Somebody outside. It don't matter. You teach her. That's right. What they say don't matter. Mm -hmm. It's her soul that's at risk. Okay? And what the way you can handle it, Sister Donna, I understand. Why don't you come and join us? And I'll have two. But if you can't join us, her soul is important. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to teach her. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Next question. Um, now, the, the pulpit. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, they say, as far as the calling... Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the calling is just not preaching in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's many ways to preach the word of mm -hmm. God. With That's some people, right. they have passion to it and in the street, which mm -hmm. is my one of the passions that I have. Mm -hmm. I like the street. Mm -hmm. Pulpit, I'm, it's, I mean, every time when God calls you and give you a word and you have to stand in the pulpit, you're going to face some stuff that mm -hmm. you don't want to face. Some, that's, right. that's one thing that I just know. It, <laughs> it's just something I really, really am really not have so happy about that. <laughs> so that's one thing that, you know, it's, it's hard for me because it's something that I have to carry on. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you say, as far as being submissive to the pastor. Yes, of course, you have to be submissive. You have to be, uh, as far as to represent as a leadership, you have to first serve. You can't just, you know, do your own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're living in the last days where so many people are, there's so many things happening in the pulpit. It's like, there's so much argument with people fussing. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. It don't matter what other people do. Mm -hmm. What matters is right here. Okay, what Joe Blow is doing down the street, don't matter. It's not our place. But it, it has. See, I have seen it happening too, as far as me. I understand when it that. Comes to but we're, once again, what did we talk about in the past? The past is not stand in the past. No, no, it don't has to do with this. Are you church. talking about? It don't has to do with this church. No, no, no. Oh, when okay. I'm saying these are experiences that I have experienced oh. in the past with okay. people. What's the question? That, like, as far as you know, how can you just um? try to um when you are in a in a level where you see the things that God showed you mm -hmm. and at the same time you are seeing things as far as um that person it's against you and those things that you have to face as a leadership and I still you know there's things that there's times where you have to submit and you don't want to be rebellious but at the same time it's like God is pushing you because that there okay. is a, it's 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 a spiritual wall I in there I think I know where you're going <laughs> There are times Cause that it's happening. Yeah, but you've got to be very careful. Been there, done that, write the book on it. Mm -hmm. That our personal feelings 
Yes. Mm. Do not get in the way and we blame God <coughs> for our personal feelings. Yes. Right. Okay. I have seen people rebuke people. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's not your place to rebuke anybody on these views. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. But I have seen people rebuke people and say, God told me to do this. Oh, no. Okay. Yes. And God didn't no more tell them than the man in the moon. No. They were speaking out of their angers, their frustrations, mm -hmm. and their wrath. Okay, mm -hmm. so you check your spirit, make sure that any of us is still mm -hmm. in this, we need to check our spirit. And I'll give you a personal example. We had a woman that was coming to our church. She tried to run my two-year-old over with a car. Mm. Her and her sons, who were in their 30s, followed me from store to store, screaming and harassing me for weeks. The day she tried to run my two-year-old, I'd put up with this for months. And the day she tried to run my two-year-old over, that was enough. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I did good to put up with it to the end, for those that are beginning to know me. And I picked my little girl at that time, which was Laura, my oldest one, and I literally threw her at her daddy. And I went after that woman. Okay? God didn't tell me to. It was all sin to use <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Love me. Love I told my husband when I got home, if you don't do something about her, I'm going to. And God don't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like top now, top back go, okay. buddy. <laughs> so I have to you I had to check myself. My husband, bless his heart, he said, Stop. You're letting yourself get in the way. Mm -hmm. He said, now we will protect law and we will do what's necessary. He said, let's pray about this woman. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went on my face and I told God, I talked to God like I'm talking to you right now. God, you move her. You move me. Mm -hmm. You correct the situation or I'm going to be your hands. <laughs> <laughs> She's threatening my child. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. So God stepped in. Two years. Two years of me being harassed around that time. Now, she never threatened my child again after that. God took care of that. Mm -hmm. But she did continue with me. Because God knew my child was my breaking point. Mm -hmm. So God removed that obstacle. But he let me keep feeling it. Why? Because he was teaching me a lesson mm -hmm. while he was teaching her a lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we need to watch sometimes that it's not us getting in the way. Okay? As far as opposition against what we're doing, then all we can do, just like I had to pray about her, all we can do is pray. Mm -hmm. Okay, and ask God to handle that person. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we can't take that vengeance into our hands. That's right. Okay, now That's right. we can protect. Mm -hmm. We can guard. That's just like if somebody came in here tomorrow and started beating up on you for certain things. Honey, I'd be right there protecting. Mm -hmm. If I'm within your shot, I'm going to be right there protecting. Mm -hmm. I have gone out at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of domestic violence situations and pulled a man off of one of our saints in the church. Mm -hmm. I will do what I can. Okay, but at the same time, I'm not going to turn around and pick up a baseball right. bat unless it's self-protection and beat him up just because he was doing something wrong. That's between the law and... God, I protected her. She's now fine. Let the law handle her. Yeah. Okay. So weigh the situation out. I'll give you one more example. <laughs> we had a dear sister. Now, I was young in the Lord at the time. Young in marriage. I'll put it that way. And this dear sister, every time, brother and sister Hodge, which was the pastors that my husband and I got married at, my husband was his assistant. Every time they would go out of town. The sister would get sick and need prayer. <laughs> service after service for about four services. My husband would pray for her and she'd start shouting. And she'd get slayed in the spirit. And when she gets slayed, she'd fall forward. Not backwards like most people do. Oh, of course she'd fall not. forward, <laughs> grab his shoulders and move them all. Oh, all right <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I um, waited until the pastor's wife got back in town. And I called her. I said, Sister Hodge, this is Sister Yusufan. And she knew when I said Sister Yusufan, I said, Cindy, something's up. She said, yes, ma'am. And I told her what was happening. And I told her how long it had been going on. And I said, now, Sister, let me tell you what I'm going to do. 
I said, you're the pastor's wife. You can handle this. Or the next time you go out of town and she does this, I'm going to reach up and I'm going to, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm going to grab her by the head of the hair and I'm going to shout all over that church. <laughs> and I said, and when I'm done, she will never ask my husband for prayer again. Oh, oh my goodness. Ooh, okay. Hilarious. So that was handling some opposition, but I gave the authority the choice to handle it. Right. Right. Okay. It was a situation that needed to be handled. And in my quirky way of doing wow. things, I handled it. Okay. That's so awesome. But I gave the proper authority yeah. the right to handle this it first. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's some oppositions that you're going to face, mm -hmm. especially if it's within the body. Mm -hmm. It needs to go to the pastor. Right. right. Okay. There's some oppositions that you're going to face that the Bible tells if you think your brother has something against you, and that also means sister, then you go to them, leave your Leave your prayers at the altar, and you go there. Sister Linda, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I have just felt a wall. Mm -hmm. You know, if I've done any, you don't have to go into details. You don't have to ask them for details. If I've done anything to offend you, I want you to know I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. right. And you make it right. Now, what she does with it is between right, her and right, God. Right, 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 right. right, 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 right but right. I've done what the Bible tells That's me right. to do, and I can go and they'll pray. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. Mm -hmm. All right? Sometimes when we're facing things out on the streets, we need to remember the devil is going to throw things at us. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Okay, and if you're preaching a street revival, honey, you're not going to get some tomatoes thrown at you. Yeah. Now you can pick them up and throw them back or you can just go on preaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's all just, it's decisions. And the, what, the way I've counseled people in the past, you can choose your battles. Yep, right. Because some battles are yours to fight. Mm -hmm. Some battles are God's to fight. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so we have to pick and choose our battles. That's true. Was that all your questions? Yes. Okay. Um, as far as um, family, mm -hmm. that is, that's the hardest thing to win. Yes, it is. Um, I have, um, with, the, the, with my family, has been years, prayers, and try to win them to God. Uh, I have words of warning to the family and um, also when you speak the word of warning to the family, you know, you're always going to face the spiritual warfare. So those are things that um, they always look for an excuse to be mad at you, mm -hmm. you know, and then that the enemy takes advantage of that to make you feel guilty, mm -hmm. like you did something wrong. and. And I'm not rushing, but I'm going to keep my promise, too, okay? I know, I, I understand. I have an uncle that was an atheist. I invited him to church. I invited him to church. I invited him to church. And he even told me one day, it's my favorite uncle, and I was his favorite niece, to be honest with you. And he looked at me, he said, you go in that house. And I was about 12 years old, and I'll never forget this. And you tell your parents, quit putting you up and coming out here inviting me to church. There is no God, and if there is one, he's never done anything for me. Yeah, I heard that one too. And I told him, I said, Uncle Letty, I want you to know that God still loves you. And my parents didn't put me up to this. Well, Uncle Letty went on about his business. It's not too much to say to a 12-year-old child. Okay, but as time went on and I became an adult, the battles got Stronger. Okay, <laughs> I've heard plenty from my family because I have hard shell Baptist, I have Jehovah Witness, I have Primitive Baptist, I have oh buddy, you name it, I've got it. I've even wow. got Roman Catholic. Idols. Okay, I've got the, I've got it. I've got a Satan worshiper. You know, I, you know. So I've seen, you have seen it all. I've worked with it all. I understand it all. All you can do, Sister Liz is let them feel your love. Because I'm going to tell you what family sometimes feels, even though you're not doing it. Family takes the attitude of, you think you're better than me. Yeah. That's right. That's true. That's true. Uh -huh. Every time. You yes. think you're better than me. Yes. So this is what I do. God, I cannot reach my Uncle Eddie. So I'm asking you. Now, I don't, didn't. My, he's going to be with the Lord now. But I did not pass up the opportunity to invite him, to remind him of what God can and does. But I asked God to send somebody else that could reach him. It's the same with if you're out of the world of drugs, 
you don't need to be going back to the drug addicts right. Right. teaching them Bible studies. That's right. Why? Because that group, I'm not talking about all drug addicts, I'm talking about the group you hung with. Mm -hmm. Because that group is going to have a hold on you. Yes. Right. Okay, you need to stay away from them. God sends somebody. Mm -hmm. I've told my daughter many times, you cannot reach that group. Right. I'm going to start praying for somebody to go and reach that group. You work on that group in Texas that don't know you. That's right. right. Exactly. So she's winning souls out there now, and God is sending others to this group she used to run in. Okay, we can't reach everybody. I cannot reach everybody. But there's going to be some that I can't reach that you can. There's going to be some I can't reach, Sister Nathan, that you can. There's going to be some that you can't reach that I can. Okay? So we focus on whom we can reach. I thought about it coming here tonight. Your paper. Sister Liz has a paper out here on the bulletin board. And it's got a place where if you have somebody that needs a Bible study, that she's willing to go teach it to them. And one thing that you said to me the other night, she's, you said especially if they're Spanish. Cha-ching! I'm not fluent in Spanish, so if I talk somebody who is Hispanic into doing a Bible study, Lord, Sister Liz, take them and teach them. Mm -hmm. We build, a, we're building blocks, and we build on each other's talents. Right. Okay? Teach them. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's some people, and I hate putting it this way, but I've run across them. There's some people that can't see through the color of my skin. Right. Mm -hmm. That's but right. you'll be able to reach them. And vice versa. Right. Which is stupid. Yes, it is. Okay. It's really but it's reality. Yep. It is. Let me tell you something. The first church my husband and I pastored, I'm fixing to let y'all go, but the first church my husband and I pastored was set right downtown center of the black community. All my neighbors were black. The church was in the black community. But the whites wouldn't come because it was in a black neighborhood and the blacks was it wouldn't come because we were white pastors. Oh, no. <laughs> but the funny thing was we sat on each other's porches and drank sodas and ate moon pies. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that's not stereotyping. That's what we did. Right. Okay. And they looked out for me. They knew what those boys that lived across the street from us when my husband was out of town. I knew they were sitting over there watching my house. Because they were only nobody messing with me. Okay. And I took food to their mama when she had surgery. But they didn't. They didn't mingle in the church. I taught Bible studies, but they wouldn't come to church. But if they would have seen you sitting on my pew, mm -hmm. they'd have seen you sitting on my pew, sister. They'd have seen Andrea sitting on my pew. Mm -hmm. They'd have come. Mm -hmm. So we can reach different people from different cultures, different backgrounds. I'm not going to reach a drug addict because I've never taken shot up my veins or anything like that. I could reach them with some other things, but I can't reach them with that. I, never that I don't know anything about it. But there's people that's sitting in here and going to be sitting in here. Mm -hmm. they can. So we don't ever, we, tell you, we had a beautiful lady in one of our churches. When my husband and I got married, I knew nothing about her. I just knew her and her husband were Hispanic and I thought she was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. She had long, cold, black hair. And I thought she was Indian. And she had danced before the Lord and danced before the Lord. They had seven beautiful children, well-behaved kids. It was, you know, they never spoke at church. I always wondered sometimes. They never spoke at church. But they were wonderful. They were wonderful people. And one day, somebody decided to inform me of her past. And she had been a prostitute. And I said, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Good for you. I said, God delivered yeah. her. Now she That's can right. reach others. Yes. If I go on a street corner, now I've done it. But, you know, and I've had some of them laugh at me. Well, you don't know the type of life I'm living. Well, to a degree, they're right. But I take somebody with me that has. They can relate with That's them. Right. They can work with them. They say, honey, I know why you're here. I know what's going on. You don't have to live this life. Let me tell you about a God that saved you from it. Yes. Right. Okay, that's why we never... Never diminish your brother and sister's talents. Mm -hmm. right. Never. Because every one of us has got a past. Yes, and right. every one of us can build off of that past. Right. And reach somebody else that's walking in those shoes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something else, Sister Liz. Don't let the devil tell you.
that you can't do it because of the naysayers. Mm -hmm. Christ had a whole bunch of them. That's yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. What about opposite sex? Like for me, teaching a man. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Now, when I teach a man a Bible study, I meet them in a public place. Yeah. Okay, we go to McDonald's, we go, I'll buy them an ice cream cone or something. We go somewhere where nobody can question. Because mm. the Bible does tell us that our good be evil spoken of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go somewhere, I never bring them to my house unless pastor's there. Right. Okay. I don't meet them at motels, no. because even though you're in the lobby, that motels today have beautiful lobbies, even though you're in the lobby, you're still walking out of that motel together. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, say, and you guys, it's the same for y'all. If you're teaching a woman, teach them in a public place if your wife cannot be there. Or call one of the sisters of the church. Yeah. You know? That's the best thing. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The object sex, best that a man the other person take care of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, but then again, we do go back to the fact that it's time sensitive. Yeah. If you have to wait yeah. three or four hours, you may lose the opportunity to witness that person. So just do it in a public place. If it's something that you schedule for three or four days later, then get somebody to go with you. you grab Matthew. Come on, Matthew. We've got to go to your family. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Your family is, is the hardest one. Mm -hmm. My the hardest yep. one you can reach. I had somebody to tell me, I told my nephew, invite him to church, and someone said, if you go to that church and start acting like her, I'm going to disown you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was telling Brother Watts this weekend, I had a, a friend, a very close friend of mine, for five years, every Sunday, he knew when she went home from church that her husband was going to beat the daylights out of her mm. for going to church. For five years, he put up with that. And there was a straw that broke the camel's back. But for five years, he would go to church. She didn't let that stop. Her. And when she got home, he met her at the door. And she come to work. We worked together. She come to work next day with black and blue eyes and busted lips. And I tell her, Rita, you don't have to put up with this. And she said, Yes, I am, for his soul's sake. And I admire that woman. I'm going to wow. tell you, I admire because I've been killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I admire. <laughs> and so when Rita came home one day, he said, well, I can't reach you this way. I'm going to reach you another way. And so he started beating her 10-year-old daughter. <gasps> that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. She grabbed a pair of scissors off the dresser, rammed them up his nose. The EMS came and got him, took him to the hospital. The next Sunday, he was in church with her. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so, don't be afraid. Maybe not that aggressive, <laughs> but don't be afraid to get aggressive every now and then. <laughs> and Sister wow. Nathan, the, the point of all that is, it takes different <laughs> situations and different people <laughs> to reach sometimes. So, like I was telling Sister Liz a minute ago, if our family, if we can't seem to get through that wall of our family, their, their resistance, mm -hmm. they start praying for God to send somebody right. that can like get through their resistance while you're praying for their souls. Okay, I had a partner, Sister Ruth and I, she was our associate pastor's wife in Waycross, Georgia. She would go with me to Bible studies. Because I taught a lot of Bible, Bible studies in bad neighborhoods. And she would go with me to these Bible studies and she would sit there and pray and bind the spirits. You know, she didn't make a big deal about it. She just sat there and meditated and prayed and bound the spirits that was coming against those Bible studies, coming against those souls that wanted God. And she would do that while I would teach them. So pray for God to send somebody that can reach those that are resisting you. And you pray. Pray because I'm gonna tell you when you've got that much resistance, you got spirits involved. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 So pray. Yes. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you, every time you pray, you pray, God, bind the princes of our counties. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we've got too much to do, there's too many souls to save. Right. Have I answered all the questions? Mm -hmm. One more. Okay. Real quick. If you hang hang on. Mm -hmm. If you have to go, you are free to go. Um, if you stay from this point, it's of your own choice. <laughs> you don't do this. Well, yes, ma'am. Real quick. You okay, last like question. If you were, you know, given the Bible study, the, the person was really passionate, and you said, you know, we could baptize you right now, 
in our positions, w would we call you and say, hey, look, can Give I make a call. call real quick? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, Give us a call. If Pastor and I are not able to send, we'll send He'll somebody that can. Okay. Push comes He'll to shove. He'll give us shove. a time. And, and, well, okay. push, push comes to shove, as long as the person that's doing it is, has the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name and living like they're supposed to be living, baptize them. Mm. You could say in our cars that we're passing out. Call pass first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Got information on gotcha. it. And we're getting ready to do new cars. Is there any way we can say we have a Spanish ministry mm -hmm. or sign ministry? We can't on the business card because it's full already. Okay. okay. But I'm preparing some flyers for us to hand out yeah, that cool. shows the different departments that we're doing. Okay. So that we can hang on doors and things like that, or hand to people either right, way. Right, right. But yeah. our business, the business card is full. Small. Okay. But yes, we do need to let people know, and it's also on our website. Okay. That's right. yeah. Okay. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? So, how would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Dear Lord, we thank you this evening, God, for your goodness and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for meeting here with us for this lesson tonight. We pray, God, that we'll all take something home with us that will help us to be better soul winners and to be better leaders, Lord, and to be what you would have us be. Keep us in your care and help us to go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Between now and the next class, I want you to read about the five-fold ministry, and I'll be asking before I start the class, look it up. Gotcha. That's the point. <laughs> gotcha. We're going to be studying about it, and I'm going to be asking you before I ever teach what it is. What y'all think the five fold ministry is? Okay. You are dismissed. Thank you all for coming. Oh, I need to write down.